Um, and welcome back um, to those who are now joining us as well um, for Art in Hong Kong, People, Place and Practice. So this next session is something that's obviously very close to me as we go through the history of the Sovereign Art Foundation. Um, David Elliott has been our chair judge for the past 11 years and he's currently based in the UK. So please tune in now to Zoom discussion between him and our founder chairman Howard Bilton as they have a candid conversation about the Sovereign Asian Art Prize. First off, I want to welcome everybody to our, our webinar. I'm uh, sorry that we can't be uh, live with everybody, which would obviously be the preference from everybody's point of view, but circumstances dictate otherwise. Um, anyway, we'll make the best of it, and, and we hope this talk will, will prove informative and, and help get our message across, which is important to us. And um, first off, I welcome David Elliott, who is our chair of judges and has been in that position for long as I can remember almost, but um, I think about 10 years, David? 11. 11 years, okay, good, right. Well, uh, I'm gonna pour a little bit of cream down his back at this point because um, I didn't warn him about this, but I think it's fitting. But uh, David is one of the foremost art experts, curators in the world. And we are extraordinarily fortunate to have had him as a chair of judges, and he has been extraordinarily helpful in, in our development of the art prizes and remains so. And also he's a very amusing bloke. So uh, for all those reasons, we're delighted that he's agreed to stay on and uh, is helping us still. And we're delighted to have had him as chair for the uh, 11 years. Um, why did you agree to do this, David? Well, that's a big question. Mm. I should say I'm speaking from deep in the disease-ridden heartlands of Great Britain, namely Oxford. Uh, where last night Oriel College decided at last to take down this statue of Cecil Rhodes, a, a notable imperialist, not one involved in Hong Kong, but he could have been. Um, so we're living in momentous times in many ways. And um, I guess the reason to answer your question, mm -hmm. uh, Howard, uh, I'd been involved with uh, Asian art for, for a while when I began to get to uh, uh, I was approached, in fact, uh, my friend Pamela Kemler, who lived in Hong Kong at that time, was on your board. I also yeah, knew Claire Su, yeah, who, Claire Su, who was also on your jury, I mean your jury. Yeah. Um, and uh, they, uh, they told me about this. And um, I mean, I'd visited Hong Kong uh, before, but I mean, I'd really been involved in the Asian art since the beginning of the 80s, and we made a big, big show of... Uh, of Indian, Indian art of different kinds, uh, ranging from the modern, modern Bombay progressives right up to the present in the 80s, uh, Indian photography, and also looking at folk art, and looking at these separately, but also within the parameter, broad parameter of culture. So, so that was really the bug that got me going. Um, then working uh, in Japan and China through the 80s, uh, of course, living in Japan later as a uh, as a uh, director, the first director of the Murray Art Museum from the uh, from 2001 to 2005. And I think when, when I met Tiff, I was in Turkey. I was the first director of the uh, Istanbul Modern at that time. And uh, I, Hong Kong had always been a bit of a mystery to me in a way. I mean, uh, uh, I'd worked in the mainland, Chinese mainland, done a big show at the beginning of the 90s of the new Chinese art. I met uh, Johnson Chang at that time and that he was doing the thing and he was a great energetic people um, and a great source of information to me about, about art on the mainland and classical Chinese painting. But getting to know more about Hong Kong and its cultural scene was much more difficult. Uh, I did meet Oscar Ho, uh, and the people at the Hong Kong Art Gallery. Again, this was in the mid 90s. Um, but I didn't come to Hong Kong very often. And all of a sudden I found myself coming more and more here. Um, and uh, I had discovered you've been doing this and uh, uh, Tiffany uh, was talking to me about it. And obviously it had huge possibilities, but um, it, uh, it also had a few problems. Mm. And, and I thought I could help with those problems. Uh, though some of them are just procedural, uh, how to get nominations from, I mean, what's Asia for a start? And the same struggle, problem that uh, Claire Sue was struggling with, uh, with the Asian Art Archive. 
Mm. How do you define it? And then how do you get contacts? And, and the need for it. And uh, I found it fascinating. And uh, the possibility of looking at vast amounts of work, which were sent in, not just ad hoc, but by nominators. And in fact, we strengthened the nominating system. It was a little bit shaky when I got there, but we actually made sure we got professional people in each place and general specialists of the, of the region who were nominating people. So I was able to see something that had been firstly looked at by someone who knew it wasn't just picked up from anywhere. And it was a pro way I could learn. So I got a lot out of it. But I'd like to ask it the same question to you, Howard. What, what was the spark that made you want to do it? Uh, yeah, well, it's a question I've been asked a lot, and I, and I struggle with an adequate answer, really, because um, I think it was just a light bulb moment about how to turn what was a private passion of art collecting into a charitable um, enterprise. But um, I spent some time refining thoughts on it, and it took a while to come up with the format we started with. Um, and then refine it from there. So to begin with, it was an open entry system and we, we very quickly became snowed under with entries and it was actually a local gallerist, Katie Dottilly, who you'll know very well, David, who yeah. suggested the nomination system, which we readily adopted. And, uh, and actually at that point, she was um, sending us artists and, and said she thought it was improper that she was allowed to do so having a commercial interest in the people that she sent for. Right, right, too. <laughs> uh, we, we readily thought, well, yes, actually, why didn't we think of that? But that, um, she was actually instrumental in changing that. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the original aims of the prize were when, I, I've been in Hong Kong 30 years, and the prize has been going for 16 of those. And um, it became apparent to me from an early stage that um, the art scene and the cultural scene in Hong Kong around it was, was pretty limited. There was a few commercial galleries who were finding the next superstar Chinese artists, very little um, exposure for Hong Kong artists, and to my mind, very little appreciation by the public of art for art's sake, because we had no museum of contemporary art or, or any way of displaying temporary art other than in these commercial galleries. So one reason was let's put some art in front of the general public so that they can appreciate it for its own sake. And while doing so, we can help these artists, uh, giving them international exposure, which they lack. Because although the prize always has been open to internationally famous artists, realistically, we don't get them. They're beyond entering art prizes. I think we had a few contacts and said, I'll enter if you can guarantee I'll win. And of course, um, I said, well, I can't do that because I'm not a judge, so I have no influence over it. And that's entirely proper that I'm not a judge. And secondly, because the judging system will take its course and uh, we don't wish to try and influence that. So realistically, we're getting the next level down is what we're aiming for, which is nationally famous artists who are bubbling under, who are well known in their own country, but not internationally. And we give them an international platform. So we've been able to assist artists grow their careers, I think and our results and mapping of this, we can prove that, that that has happened. To me, that was always a secondary aim to using the art as a way of raising funds to, to help impoverished children. And I was always approaching this first and foremost from a charitable standpoint. But it became very apparent that if we were gonna raise money through the, for the charity, we had to have the world's best art prize. So we set out to make the world's best art prize to enhance the fundraising opportunities and of course it took some time to to get it really up to speed and um you know again i think you were of enormous help with that as indeed were many other people and all of whom i'd like to add give up their time for free uh, um, as do i and as do tip um but it's been a it's been a fantastic joint enterprise between many people collaborating with us and i think we can count it a huge success We've raised over 9 million US dollars. We've helped um, some mid-career artists go to the next stage. We've given the Hong Kong public exposure to art, which they wouldn't otherwise seen, which is a very mixed, varied, and we'd like to think these days at least, um, a show of museum quality, which, which they otherwise wouldn't see. So we've achieved what we set out to, but um, there's, there's a lot more to do. and 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 we're determined to continue to do it, but, but we're, we're pretty pleased. And um, 
we 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 don't get smug about it, but I think we can we can be a little bit self congratulatory. And when I see the show that's on at the moment and has just opened, um, and we would have been sat amongst doing this, um, I think we can say this this is a this is a great show. So we've we, we've done something pretty good here. Yeah, well, I, I, I think so. And uh, I, I mean, you say it's a team effort. It is a gigantic team effort. I mean, there's, yeah. there's your, your team working with Sovereign, who kind of hold it all together, administer it. Yeah. Uh, then there's the nominators. And I mean, I see this year there's 25, uh, 88 nominators from 25 yeah. countries. Yeah. I mean, this is amazing. It's, um, it's great, isn't it? It's great. And all of them yeah. doing it from the kindness of their heart. Uh, I think they enjoy doing it. I mean, the feedback we get is that it's a pleasure for them to help artists that they know who they think should be recognized yeah. by putting them forward. And I think the judges are international the platform. Work. Yeah. I, I think what one's got uh, you know, Turkey alongside um, uh, Brunei and Bhutan, mm. uh, yeah. <laughs> they're nominators in all of those places. Um, and of course, the, 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 the pool of artists is very different in, in each. Yeah. And uh, the trick of it is trying to, trying to reflect that in one's nominations. And it, it's a very good job. Then, of course, there's the judges, five or six, I think, of these. It must be an odd number. I think it's probably five this year. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we, uh, don't, we don't actually need an odd number because our, our scoring system, as you will know, means we just add up the total points. So we don't require a majority decision on anything. Um, the point system true. is designed to deal with impulses in trying to get a consensus. And um, I know that one year when we ran our European Art Prize, um, and Peter Blake was actually the head of the judges, and in my absence, he rather hijacked the procedure. I'm not complaining, but I, I'm just pointing out. And he tried to get a consensus from what we actually had that year, nine judges, um, an unusually high number. And they wanted to reach a consensus on which was the winning piece. And uh, when I spoke to them afterwards, um, shortly afterwards, over the lunch I'd arranged, none of them were happy with the result, but it was a result mm -hmm. that they could all li would live with. And uh, I think we illustrated with that that our system is perhaps superior because it's points based and that's it. So the, the one with the most points it wins and, and there is no consensus required. And I've never had too many complaints about who won it through that system. So I, th I think it is, it is quite good. I think it's a better system, to be honest. Um, mm. It's not the old way, as you say, certainly not the old British way, where consensus, it should be in, in inverted commas very often. It's usually a, a series of... Uh, uh, <laughs> blackmails going on in the room. Um, <laughs> Bit of uh, trading. Yeah, I, I've been on the Turner Prize jury and I was appalled. <laughs> <laughs> it was almost over my dead body. I would um, think you being a fly on the wall at that particular point <laughs> in the conversation. Yeah, well, I was in the minority, of a very small minority, shall I say. Yeah. Um, but um, yes, I mean, it's, uh, I, I like it because uh, each, just to explain to people, we each uh, see the works. Uh, we make our first sifting online. There's no way you can get these, what is it, 611 artworks <laughs> to see by all the different judges. Um, so we, uh, we do that online. But then when the finals are there, we all come and see them, but we vote individually. Yeah. And then it, uh, it's totted up. And, and, and this is interesting. It's, I don't always agree with it, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, it's not what it's about. It's about there being different, all professionals with different perspectives, different views, and um, it, it expresses uh, something other than individual feeling. And yeah. individual feeling is very, very important. It's obviously what I work with a lot of my time professionally, but I think in something that is, you know, is having a very broad view, seeking emerging talent and all this thing, one can't know everything. And uh, we all have to admit this, and it's a good way of, uh, of it being expressed in a transparent and open way. And that I support completely. And that is one of the reasons I got involved with you, Howard. Yeah, the fine. other reason is synergy. Yeah. And this is the synergy between, um, obviously between getting money to charities and getting money to artists. So both benefit. And the artists uh, get as much as they would if they sold through a gallery. So then they're not losing out at all from this. So they're not subsidizing it. 
the nominators and the judges, uh, and you put in time or money into it, um, but the artists don't. Uh, and the most they do is take a risk that they're not chosen for the final, but I mean, they don't have to pay a fee. That's right. Um, um, no. So uh, the other thing is, uh, is with the, the growing interest in an Asian art market, and you know, we've seen this not only in our lifetime, but in the second half of our lifetime. I mean, there wasn't much of an Asian art market uh, uh, in the 90s, frankly. I mean, hmm. one of the milestones to me was the first Asian Art Asian Pacific Triennale in Brisbane in 1993, which I went along to. That was the first time anyone had tried to bring all of this in some sort of uh, control and show because most of the Western world weren't even clear. Cambodia, art, contempt, forget it. Well. We have definitely made some discoveries and um, I think uh, we should have a look at some of them. Um, Absolutely. So uh, with your permission, I'm gonna share our screen and uh, Go for it. grab up some images, um, which um, will, if technology allows, um, <laughs> Uh, Much more interesting to look at art than me, anyway. <laughs> oh, I would find it difficult not to agree with that. Exactly. Um, so, uh, this was one of our um, earlier winners, but not his earlier winning piece. This was an early entry by uh, 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 Chow Chun Fai, who. Uh, mm. How do yeah. I move this on? Um, Press the button. That's it. Good. So, um, yeah, this was a, a finalist, not a winner, but Chow Chun Fine later won it. And um, I have to confess an interest that since then I've, I've collected quite a lot of his pieces. Um, yeah, what, what do you reckon of this one, David? Sorry? What do you think of this one? You're fascinating. Is, this, is, it, is it a recent one or is it more? No, it's, um, I'd say it's probably 12 years old. Yeah, so, before he started putting the texts on them. Yeah. He's probably doing something more now. No, I, I, I like his work very much. And um, uh, he's one of those artists, I think, who's now becoming the, well, he was kind of middle generation, elder middle generation of Chinese, of, of Hong Kong artists. And uh, I think what has happened in Hong Kong is that now there's a real art scene in Hong Kong of Hong Kong artists yeah. and some kind of identity around that which isn't, they, they share any style or approach or anything like that, but they share a view of themselves and the world within a, a political macrocosm. And well, this is very fascinating. Yeah, that's certainly something we've noticed, all of us at the Art Prize, that the strength of Hong Kong art is getting so much better. And you're right, when we started this, it was hard to find any Hong Kong artist really of, uh, of renown, but now there, there are many, and, and here's another one. Oh, Chow Chun Fai, um, incident. he's got a new exhibition on at the moment at Exit Gallery, which um, is all paintings based around the um, demonstrations. Yep, oh, um, terrific. Yeah, terrific work, uh, a little bit yeah. commercial as you can imagine, so um, it hasn't been publicised as much as it might, but great work. Yeah, well I saw his work, I think, in the Sovereign Prize and also on the walls of Pamela Kemba's house. Hmm. Um, and I, I chose his work for uh, the... Um, Sydney Biennale in 2010, which I, which I was the artistic director of. Mm. Yeah. Here's, here's one, um, uh, this again isn't his winning piece, but this was um, an entry by Chung Chin Hua, and again a little controversial, another Hong Kong artist. Um, those looking carefully might see some um, language which is a bit fruity, let's put it this way. Yeah. Yeah, and um, in That's fact... Fascinating work this piece ended up in my wife's collection as she bid on it at auction and paid way too much money or well maybe not but a, a goodly amount and i think he's become quite important hasn't he i haven't kept track of him too well but chung kin wah seems to be going strength to strength as well he was doing uh, doing doing strong work and i mean he was shown as a hong kong pavilion in venice uh, three or four years ago um and so i mean he's certainly of the this new emerging generation it was him and Lee Kit, um, Charlton Fai. Uh, these were leading characters in that uh, emerging generation. Mm. Here uh, we go, Frog King. Go. The Frog King, yes. Yeah. We all like the Frog King, don't we? Um, Absolutely. He's um, bonkers in the extreme, but um, 
going strong, I think. There seems to be a lot of interest in his work at the moment. Um, yeah. A couple of very strong shows at Katie de Tilly's gallery. I keep mentioning her. She, um, she yeah. gave me a drink, I think. Um, well, he's a popular artist and really out there in the streets. And she's been able to sort of organize him into more formally. And that's, uh, that's good from everyone's point of view. Yeah, I think she's done a great job sort of curating his work, which, as you say, was all over the place. And uh, yeah. again, one of our earlier finalists who turned up wearing very strange gear and some glasses you couldn't see through um, and amusing a lot of people. Um, this was an early winner, actually, uh, David, before your time, I think. And mm, yeah. um, one of the few who has not really gone on as we expected, but um, he seemed to have signed uh, an exclusive deal with a... Um, a representative who uh, we thought didn't really know what was um, how this should be done and uh, hampered him greatly and I, he's, he's rather disappeared although we did see a couple of pieces from him at um, Art Basel a couple of years ago but mm -hmm. most of our other winners have gone on to great things. Um, mm -hmm. This is one of my Absolutely. personal favourites and yeah. Yeah. you'll know all about him David. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Rashid is, I mean, that's a classic work. I mean, it's a, from the Veil series, which was somewhat shocking when it appeared and is still shocking. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's, he's important as an artist, also as a teacher and leader uh, based in Lahore, a, a great figure in, in, in contemporary Pakistan art. And um, no, I, I, I've worked him on a number of occasions and uh, yeah. it's, it was great to see that it, this work was, was shown with you. Yeah. This was a, a peculiar one and um, because it arrived and at the time the prize was only open to painting and um, I think you were again instrumental in changing that because you wanted oh, yeah. photography <laughs> Absolutely. and this arrived and it was photography but it was described as painting so we, we had to actually disqualify it from the prize but we wanted to show it because it was so fascinating and um, interesting so we did show it and I know as a little anecdote and perhaps slightly grubby talking about money but um, it was estimated at 2,000 US dollars for this piece and a, and a bidding war ensued at our dinner um, uh, which I might have been involved with along with my next door neighbour um, up where I live in Pok Fulam and he eventually got it at 14,000 US dollars so about seven times estimate and uh, at the time it appeared well very charitable of you to bid Keep up the price. Price. Yeah. but yeah. Um, in retrospect a right bargain I think so um, uh, it's, it's, it sort of illustrates that uh, we offer an investment opportunity, we would argue, as well as, um, as, well as an art collecting opportunity. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's, uh, that's right. Uh, it's a gift to people who are interested in art or would like to have art with half a brain, because it's been <laughs> twice. Yes. It's been sifted by people, nominators who know what they're doing, uh, by judges who know what they're doing, and... Um, you know, I mean, uh, you, you, in, the, in the auction houses, obviously you, you're looking at provenance and all the rest of it, you know, you know, it's genuine. But in contemporary art, of course it's genuine. I mean, there's no such thing as a fake in contemporary art, really. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's a matter of, is this, is this worth spending time with? And if, you, if it's gone through this system uh, with, I think, fairly skeptical bunch of people, uh, then sure as hell it's worth spending some time with. Now I should say that I'm not interested in the art market at all. I don't work with the market, but it's very necessary because artists must sell their work. It's one of the ways they can live and it's very, very important and I'm, I'm very happy to support it. Now though, do I think art's about prizes, but for the same reason, yeah. <laughs> support prizes because it's a platform for getting work out so people can see it. Well, we certainly uh, make great play on the fact that this is a unique forum where you get to see art which has been vetted by two boards of independent experts, first the nominators and then the judges. And I think that is unique and, and a point that you've, you've made there and well made. Um, this one I don't know too much about. Um, I think this is one you uh, uh, quite liked, isn't it, David? It's Aniguchi. Oh, yeah. very, very important Philippine artist. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, a, a Filipina conceptualist and uh, she's making wonderful work she's widely seen abroad very highly thought of shows regularly in Berlin um, no no excellent Jane Lee I know, I know. 2007. yeah so, 
This was um, uh, paint applied by syringe, and it doesn't show very well here, but I thought this was great work. And I think, again, she's become quite important, certainly in Singapore. In Singapore, yeah, no, she's, she's, a, she's a good artist, yeah, yeah. Sure. good painter. This was Only a winner from 2007, which I didn't altogether get, but um, I know, I think you were an enthusiast about this work, weren't you? Yes, very. Um, it's the first time I saw it, I think. Um, she wasn't so known. Well, well, no, it wasn't actually. I'd seen her work in 2004 in Tokyo. But um, uh, very independent artist using uh, traditional Nihonga style uh, painting. So traditional pigments, traditional support paper, mm. uh, but with these weird sort of rather masochistic uh, 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 sadomasochistic images and um, so very very strong. I showed her it several times. Now I'm getting messages that we're quickly running out of time here David when I said oh yeah we're obviously uh, having fun. Hours. Yeah we're having quite fun um, but perhaps I could uh, whiz through a few more images and just uh, yeah, well maybe we should talk about this year's prize. Yes just quickly. let's do that. What do you what do you think of the quality of the work? To me it's very strong. Yes, well, uh, obviously, I think it's, yes, having looked at all 611 of the submissions, yeah. my God, it took a long time, um, but uh, it is a very strong submission uh, from places which, the strengths are not in the traditional areas. Uh, I don't think China's so strong, as not there's Angelus Su's work, wonderful um, yeah. drawings. Um, and, uh, I think it's a very surprising and beautiful show. I look forward to seeing it, I hope. Yeah, uh, well, we, we, we'd, we'd, love, real flesh. we'd yes. love to get you out here. And um, again, K11, who've um, hosted us this year, is, it's made such a huge difference to the prize. No, it's the great, space. another sanity, very yeah, good. The, the space is magnificent and it just shows um, what how that art can look in a proper museum style space when it's a museum style quality. and it, has made a huge difference. So I know they're listening and I want to thank them uh, dearly for allowing us this opportunity. Absolutely. Um, and I'll but because, of, because of coronavirus, of course, as judges haven't been able to travel to see and judge the work. So you've appointed a, a local board of judges who, yeah. will, who will really act in our, uh, as our proxies, um, <laughs> who will see the works in the yeah. round and come to a decision on that. Yeah. Which, which I, I know all of us judges are very happy with. You've chosen yeah. good people. And yeah. uh, it's, it's an important principle. You, you can't do everything online. And this is art. It's important. It's, it's living in the real world. It makes this visceral effect on people. And, uh, and we, we need to treat it with respect. Yes. And um, importantly for me, as I think I said at the beginning, we've, we've raised over 9 million US dollars. And... Uh, at the moment, we're spending a lot of that in Hong Kong on our Make It Better program, helping um, children who are bereft of hope. And uh, surprisingly enough, in this very wealthy city of ours, the government official figures tell us that there's a million people in Hong Kong living below the official poverty line and 170,000 of those are children. And we're trying to help those amongst the 170,000 who have the learning and behavioural disabilities and transforming their lives through art. And we know we're achieving that. Hong Kong University have been following us around and mapping the results and uh, basically saying we're producing astounding results. So we know that um, we're doing great things. And uh, David, you've been a large part of that. And I thank you dearly for it, um, as everybody else who's helped us. Well, every bit help helps. And uh, it is a bit in face of huge problems. It really is. So we can really work and uh, improve the the system that allows such things to happen. It, it really is. It's uh, it's a drop in the ocean, really, but mm -hmm. uh, we have to try. And uh, doing nothing is not an option. And uh, as you say, with little helps, and um, we, we are we are making a difference. So um, again, uh, thanks to you and everybody else. And I think with that, we have to sign off. Okay. Thanks, David. Well, nice talking to you, Howard. Likewise, always a pleasure. I hope to see you somewhere in the world soon. Yeah, and to those outside, if you've been listening, thank you very much indeed. Yes, bye thank bye. you everyone. Thank you very much. And goodbye from, it's good night from me and it's good night from him. <laughs> good night. <laughs> bye.